Yes, I did it. I'm the fastest. This gold medal proof on my hard work paid off. Finally, I'm so proud of myself. Yes. Congratulations, but before you celebrate, we need to conduct a standard doping test. Please follow the procedure, your sample will be sent to the lab. Hmm, let's run chromatography test on these athlete samples. Look at this chromatograph. Here's an online trophy here. That must be really good crop that we used to enhance performance. I think that is made with only a non performance booster. Firstly, let's take a look at the definition of chromatography. Chromatography is a technique used to separate mixtures of soluble substances. In simple terms, it helps us to take a mixture and break it down into its individual parts. This separation happens because each component has a different preference for the mobile phase or the stationary phase. So, they move at different speeds. This is how we can isolate each substance. Chromatography is useful not just for fine separating but also for identifying and measuring substances. It's commonly used in clinical laboratories, especially to have techniques metabolic disorders involving carbohydrate, proteins, and lipids. There are several types of chromatography, but the three most common ones are thin layer chromatography, or we call as TLC, gas chromatography, GC, and high performance liquid chromatography, HPLC. Let's go through them one by one. The first example for chromatography is thin layer chromatography, TLC. TLC uses a thin layer on glass or plastic as the stationary phase. It separates small compounds depending on how much they are attracted to either the stationary or mobile phase. This method is commonly used to monitor the progress of chemical reaction or to check the purity of a sample. It's simple, low cost, fast and also very sensitive which makes it a popular choice in many labs. Next, we move on to gas chromatography or we call as GC. GC uses inert gases like helium and nitrogen as the mobile phase. It's suitable for separating volatile compounds or substances that can be turned into a gas. GC is often used to estimate things like lipids, drugs, and vitamins. There are different types such as gas solid chromatography GSC, gas liquid chromatography GLC, and bonded phase gas chromatography. Lastly, High Performance Liquid Chromatography HPLC HPLC works by pushing a liquid through columns under high pressure. This allows it to separate compounds that are very closely related with high efficiency. It can detect substances using UV light, fluorescence, or mass spectrometry. It's widely used in pharmaceutical labs because it gives high resolution results and works fast. Now, let's take a quick look at these types of biological samples used for drug testing. For the first one is blood and urine are commonly used to detect recent drug use. These samples can reveal both the drug itself and its breakdown products, called metabolites. Hair, on the other hand, provides a longer detection window, sometimes up to several months. That makes it ideal for looking at the past or repeated drug use. Now, let's explore how chromatography is applied in real forensic investigation. First one is drug identification in sea substances. So when police see suspicious powders or pills, techniques like GC and HPLC are used to identify drugs such as cocaine or methamphetamine. This confirms that not only the presence of the drugs, but also their purity, which is important in legal cases. Next one is arson investigation where GCMS is also used in fire investigation. It can detect traces of accelerants like gasoline in debris, helping to determine whether the fire was accidental or delivery. Lastly is in ink and document analysis, where even documents can be forensically analyzed. Using TLC and paper chromatography, investigators can compare ink from a suspicious note to a suspect pen, helping to prove forgery or tampering. Breaking news, one of the real forensic case example we can take is the Tylenol murders in 1982. Seven people died after ingesting Tylenol capsule tainted with cyanide. But GCMS detected cyanide in both the capsules and the victim samples, solving the case and leading to tamper-proof packaging law. Lastly is drug robbery case in India, where TLC helped detect Lawrence de Palm, a sedative, and cream biscuits used to rob a victim. The chromatography matched standard Lawrence de Palm and further tests confirmed it providing strong evidence in court. Last, well, chromatography also plays a major role in protecting sports integrity. For the first one, GCMS, where this method is best for detecting volatile and stable substances like anabolic steroids or stimulants in blood and urine. Second one is PHPLC. Well, this is great for analyzing non-volatile and polar compound like beta-2, agonist, peptide hormones, and diuretics, where these substances are often used to enhance performance or mass drug use. Lastly is TLC. Although it is older method, but this thin layer chromatography is still useful as a quick, cost-effective screening method, especially for large-scale testing in early rounds. And it is also often used before confirmatory testing. 
Finally, another breaking news we can take at some real anti-doping cases involving chromatography. First one is Lance Armstrong, where he used banned substances like EPO and Pasteron, but GCMS detected synthetic steroids in his store urine samples. This result, combined with the biological passport data, led to a lifetime ban and the stripping of his seven tour titles. Second one is Maria Sharapova. In 2016 at Australian Open, HBLC detected meldonium, a banned substance in Sharapova's urine. Even though she claimed she wasn't aware of the ban, but the result led to a 15-month suspension. When it comes to analyzing drugs, scientists typically use two different methods, which is gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, GCMS, and high-performance liquid chromatography, HPLC. However, we are going to focus on the second method, which is high-performance liquid chromatography, also known as HPLC, is an analytical technique to separate each component in a mixture. Okay, so this is a short history about high-performance liquid chromatography. In the 1960s, liquid chromatography used low-pressure glass column and relied on the gravity. This changed with the development of high-performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, that used high-pressure metal column, pushing the solvent through up at 400 atmosphere. This makes the process much faster and more efficient. HPLC relies on two components to separate substance, which is the stationary phase and the mobile phase. The stationary phase usually is stay fixed in a place, while the mobile phase is a liquid solvent that falls through the column under the high pressure, carrying sample with it. As the sample moves through the column, different compounds interact differently with the stationary phase, causing them to separate as they flow out at different times. Other than analyzing drugs, HPLC also developed applicable methods such as analysis of synthetic polymers, water purification, pre-concentration of trace components, and ion exchange of proteins. Hmm. You must be wondering how does HPLC works, right? So, it all starts with the creation of mobile phase. To create the mobile phase, the solvent must go through the pump continuously from the flask to the waste cap. To measure the sample, the injection system is needed to inject the sample into the mobile phase. Then, the sample injected will be into the column section. In the column section, the identification and separation of the components happen, and this is where the stationary phase is located. After leaving the stationary phase, the sample moves to the detector and sends signals to the computer. Then, the signals will be converted into the chromatography. As shown here, these are the key instruments of high performance liquid chromatography, also known as HPLC. Without these instruments, the process cannot be carried out effectively. So, here is the methodology of the chromatography. Instead of HPLC, I'm going to explain methods of paper chromatography. Okay, so, step one add 5 ml of the solvent into the beaker. Draw a line with a pencil on chromatography paper about 1 cm up from the bottom. Then, put the ink onto the line. So, before we move to the next method, these are several questions that must be answered to solve your curiosity. The first one is, the solvent can be used in this method is either water or ethanol. Second, why the line must be drawn with a pencil, but not pen. It is because the pen contains soluble inks that can contaminate the ink spots. Third, why the ink spots must have space in between. It is because the spots can merge together and it makes hard to see the result. The second method is, carefully lower the paper into the solvent but the solvent must not cover the line or touch the ink spots. Then, observe as the solvent moves up the paper, separating up the colored mixtures. So here is another question regarding this method. Why is it important for us to make sure the solvent is not covering the pencil line or touching the ink spots? It is because the solvent can wash away the inks that might affect the result. The method is leave the paper in the solvent until the liquid almost reach the top. Then, take it out and draw a line with a pencil to mark how far the solvent moves. This line called as the solvent front. Okay, why is it important for us to draw the solvent front line immediately after taking out the paper from the solvent? It is because the solvent may evaporate quickly and it will be hard for us to see how far the solvent traveled up the paper. Here are the examples of results. The first one, they conduct the high-performance liquid chromatography to indicate what they contain inside ethanolate. First, they run the test for the plus substance, which are ATN, HCT, and AMI. Three of these are used as antihypertensive treatment. Next, they run the test for the sample. Then, they got the chromatogram for the sample. They compare it with your one to identify the standard level to be proof that the player take illegal substance or not. These three things can cause the effect. For ATN, that's help to relax the heart rate since it is beta one selective adrenal sector antagonist for AMI and HCT, both of them uses for diuretic medication. For AMI, it prevents from losing water and salt. For HCT, it prevents some mild heart failure. If the peak 
are satisfied according to graph of your sustain, then we can say that they guilty. Next, then goes for this one bodybuilder or weightlifter that we detected for unusual testosterone levels inside their hair. Here, we also use high performance liquid chromatography to identify the misused anabolic steroid. So, did you know anabolic steroid, which contain testosterone, are prohibited by the World Anti Doping Agency WADA? And relation are the process that we conduct first before undergo the gas chromatography since it will improve the gas chromatography analysis. If we conducted to differentiate the level of testosterone that originally inside the body and the testosterone that come from the addition of the outside substance, this is unworthy to do because it's not causes short term side effect, but it causes a long term side effect. This Next, the result from HPTLC, which the silica gel 60F254 plates have been used as stationary phase, and isopropyl alcohol, ethyl acetic, and ammonia have been used as mobile phase. After process done, then they observe under the UV and they can find that spot unseen by naked eyes. Then they will proceed with the same procedure to identify the substance contained inside the sample. They use the pure one and compare with the sample results. Through high performance liquid chromatography, we can identify a lot of substance from mixture, either legal or illegal. Usually, to use the method, we should use fresh sample of within a particular time, for example, urine and blood. According to this picture, results from urine sample have a lot of different substance contained inside the sample and it also detected an illegal substance inside the urine sample. And according to this picture too, the chromatogram has a different feed that indicates the different substance that inside the urine sample. Lastly, for TLC, the stationary phase are critical on the TLC plate, then mobile feed are greased by azone, both sample and standard showed a brown spot of the anti. Then it be verified by the plate sprayed with alcoholic diphenyl amine. Then they do HPLC, the result chromatogram from the sample and standard combination of explosives. The comparable fits at retention time 10.2 minutes in standard and sample were used to determine present of TNT. The samples and standard UV spectra are similar for TLC and the sample metric attribute to other noticeable fits in sample chromatogram. In conclusion, chromatography plays an important role in ensuring fairness and equality. It helps maintain justice and fairness, especially in forensic science, by uncovering hidden substances in crime scenes evidence, and in sports by detecting banned drugs to ensure fair competition. It also impacts society through public health by detecting harmful chemicals in medicine, food, and environment, and enhancing safety for the public. So, please, we confirm that there's a banned substance in the ethnic samples, and it was tested positive. Following the result of our laboratory test, you are suspected of using a prohibited substance during this championship. Hmm, I was desperate to win, but now it's just more than just a medal.